Hey Legends, can you believe it? We are just over 24 hours until Season 2024 kicks off. It's going to be an absolutely superstar start to this season, you know, kicking off in Vegas at the Allegiant Stadium. We've got four teams that will probably be in contention for the top eight. And I don't know about you, but I just can't wait to get into it. It feels like the season has just crept up on us oh so quickly. And I think the stage is set for something that is going to be absolutely huge this year. Now, before I get into it, I just want to remind people to uh, to join our league. Now, we get about a 1,000 views on every single video. And as of right now, we've got just over 100 of you in our competition. So just a reminder, 500 bucks up for grabs, cold hard cash, plus a whole heap of other prizes. And I'll also throw in a few prizes along the way just to keep things a little bit more exciting. Now, the other thing is to be eligible to enter, you must be subscribed to this channel. You must also leave a comment down below on either this video or our join our league video, just so that if you do win a prize, we genuinely know it's you and not someone trying to scam you out of a prize. So having said all of that, let's get into it. Okay, so the only caveat that I'm going to put on this team is it is locked for the Vegas players as I see it right now. So the only caveats to that is those last minute ins and outs. So if a Tupanua goes out, if Haas gets an injury or Pia Kura's knee flares up again, then I've still got about 24 hours to make some change, but I'm really not anticipating any, at least not for the Vegas players. Now, I'll just start up the top and specifically talk about the Vegas players that I've got locked in. Now, you will notice one thing. All of those players are in my starting side. Now, this is very important if you're new to fantasy and you've picked a couple of Vegas players. Putting them in your starting side means that you have the most amount of flexibility on your bench. So on your bench, you can pick any player in any position. But if I lock my bench up with Vegas players, it really means that I can only swap in and out players that are starting. So say, for example, I'm happy with the midsection got a whole bunch of Vegas players on the bench and an emerging wing fullback comes along, I may not have the flexibility to work them into my emergencies or interchange if half of those guys are already locked and I'm pretty happy with who else I've got on the bench. So it's just one to watch, one to consider. Now, looking at my Vegas players, I've got Payne Haas in at vice captain. He is expensive. He's probably not going to make me a lot of value but I am expecting some huge things. And there's a bit of logic with what I've done here because I think those opening games are going to be played mostly in the middle because that field is just a little bit smaller. So I think the edges will become quite compressed. So the big boppers, the middles, the edges, I think these guys are going to over-index a little bit in that first game. So Payne Haas, 880k. I'm expecting him to have a blinder. Then I've got Tupanua. We'll come back to him, actually. We'll talk about Cam Murray. I think he is also going to be massive this season. I think he's priced a little bit under his potential. And I think if I can have Payne Haas and Cam Murray doing their thing week on week on week, these two guys are a lock pretty much for the entire season. So the other guys I've got there are Tupanua and I've gone the Tupanua and Wong double mostly because I just can't split them. I think both of them have massive upwards potential I do like Tupanua's middle and edge duel. So if you really were on the fence, I would probably steer you more towards Tupanua than I would for Wong. But really, at the end of the day, I think they're both going to perform well, particularly at that 400 or just over 400k price point. I think both of them are set for a decent year in 2024. Now, the next guy I've got locked in for Vegas, and I know a lot of you do as well. I think he's near on 40, 50% ownership at this point in time, as he should be, is Brendan Piakura, value priced at 399K. Now the only forward that I'm a little bit disappointed that I just can't fit in is Totola from the Bunnies. Now the reason I haven't gone with Totola is I just think the Bunnies bench is absolutely stacked with forwards and I think that they will rotate them a little bit more than some of the other teams. So that's just my little bit of a watch out with Totola. It's a little bit of a concern with Cam Murray, but let's be honest, it's Cam Murray. 
And I think he plays near on enough to 80 minutes. Now, the other thing to be conscious of in Vegas is it's a lot cooler than it is here in Australia at the moment. So these guys, I don't think, are going to need as much of the rest that perhaps a forward playing week one in Australia is going to need just because it's not going to be as hot. Or at least that's my theory anyway. All right, now I do have two players playing in the backs. Now, one is Ben Trebojevic. He's got a huge ownership and he deserves it. I think the value in center this year is absolutely trash. But I'm hoping that he really has secured that edge spot for the Sea Eagles. And I really hope he can hold off Schuster for as long as possible. Because if he does, I think he's really going to grow in value. Now, Burbo at a center is absolutely trash. But at an edge, I think he's got a lot of upside. And we saw that in the trials. It gives me some degree of confidence that he will go well in 2024. And I think even with Schuster coming back, there is a role to play for Ben Trebojevic. And I really want to see his value accelerate in the first couple of weeks so that we can either decide to trade up or trade out. And hopefully at some stage in the not too distant future, secure some really decent centers. Because right now I'm running with two 250k guys which is never ideal. Okay, the last guy I have, again, isn't ideal, but the reason I've chosen him is flexibility. So Jesse Arthurs, he does have the dual center wing fullback positioning and valued at only 344K. So I like that about Jesse Arthurs. I don't think he's going to be a long-term player in my team, but I'm hoping his shift to the right wing means that he does pick up some of what Cobo loses, which is more try scoring potential. We did see a glimpse of that in the uh, the 2023 Grand Final. Jesse Arthurs does have massive potential. I'm just hoping he gets an opportunity to realize that on the right wing. So I'm probably going to run with him for a couple of weeks just to see one, how he performs, and two, what sort of real value I can extract from Jesse. Now, the other thing that I'm really careful of is I don't have a lot of wing fullback center coverage. So having some flexibility in between all of these roles is really important. We know we've got Pappenhausen coming up on a bye in week four. We've got Keeney coming up on a bye in week two. So I think for me, it's really important that we have a bit of flexibility in the backs. Now, someone I probably would have preferred to get here is Sebastian Chris down at the Raiders, but unfortunately he's out week one. Now that means that I just unfortunately can't get him for the start of the season. So there you go. Look, that's my Vegas team. Pass. Tupanua, Murray, Wong, Piakura, Trebojevic, and Arthurs. So that makes up the uh, the heart of the players playing this weekend. I'm really happy that I've got a player from each of the four teams. I think that'll make the, uh, the games just that little bit more exciting this weekend. Now, in terms of the other guys, Harry Grant up top. I really do want Harry Grant simply because he is that significant step above the rest of the hookers. And I really do think it's Harry Grant then Daylight, and then maybe a Damian Cook, who I'm just not sure can sustain his 2023 finish. And then, of course, you've got the likes of Reese Robson, Jeremy Marshall King, Brandon Smith, those sort of players. Players that I might look to target a little bit later, but as you can see there on the bench, I've got someone that I'm probably still not 100% sure of in Joey Lusick. It's still unclear, one, if Lusick's going to get the role, or if I'll be able to drop down to someone like a Brendan Hands. And the other thing that's obviously unclear is, even though Brad Arthurs said that they won't be sharing the role, who knows how it ends up on game time. So that's just one to watch. And one I'm a little bit cautious of. Now, the other players that I've got there on the bench to uh, to support the forwards at this stage are Lukey. I just love the way he uh, he finished in the trials. I think he could be a beast, particularly with the loss of Luciano Leilua up at the Cows. I think uh, that really elevates someone like Lukey. And I really want to see him step up in 2024. Ruben Cotter is another player of that sort of vein as well. He's now got the captaincy at the Cowboys. And I'm hoping... Captaincy means more minutes, bigger responsibility, and a step up in performance in 2024. That would be really awesome to see from Ruben Cotter. Now, the other player that just sort of came out of the blue in the lock roll at the Dogs was Jamin Salmon. Now, he's currently on an edge. If he gets that lock roll, he will pick up the jewel, and that will make him even more important into our teams, given one, he is super value priced at 289k. If he gets a near on 80 minute lock roll, 
he is going to make an absolutely huge amount of cash in 2024. Now, you can see, or you can probably start to see, I'm very mid-edge heavy, and that's deliberate. I think the middles and the edges really outperform the backs traditionally at the start of the season. You know, just as they're kind of dusting off the cobwebs, some of those combinations aren't fully clicking, not from the get-go anyway. It just means the guys that grab the ball and run it hard and fast through the middle really have the opportunity to make the most amount of money early. So that's the idea. Make the most amount of money early and then punt them for some of the superstar backs as these guys grow in value. So that'll be interesting to see how that goes. Now, everyone's got Sam Hughes. If you don't have him, you are absolutely crazy. I think he's in for a huge season as well. And of course, a little bit of a specky right down there on the bottom in McKaylee. He was huge in the trials for the Cows, and I think he's going to have a massive season. If he can make that starting 17 for the Cowboys, I think he's going to be another player like Sam Hughes that a lot of people are going to jump onto very, very quickly. Now, looking at my captain, Nathan Cleary. Be interesting to see if he can dust himself off from the World Club Challenge. It's probably the reality check that a team like the Panthers need to uh, really get them focused for the season ahead. So I wasn't all that disappointed, actually, that uh, the Panthers lost. I think that will get them refocused on the season ahead. It'll make them appreciate that they're not completely invulnerable. And hopefully that means come game day, week one, they're focused, they're ready. And Nathan Cleary in particular delivers some massive results, which I'm sure he will in 2024. Now, Fogarty is someone that I have had in and out of my team. I did consider going the uh, the Nathan Cleary, Drew Hutchinson combo just to free up some money to put into the backs. But at the end of the day, I think... Um, I've gone with the pack on this one. I just see so many teams with Fogarty in it, and I'm happy to bow here to the wisdom of others. I will be keeping a, uh, a keen eye on Fogarty and Hutchinson and just see who ultimately prevails. I hope they both do well, but I'm just not confident in a Canberra Raiders team in general. I just think, you know, week one, it could be Fogarty. Week two, it could be Ethan Strange and Weeks. I just don't know what uh, what the season ahead is going to do for the Raiders. So that's a very, very interesting one. Okay, so next up, supporting Ben Trebojevic, we have Ethan Strange. Now, I am acutely aware that it could either be Ethan Strange or KO Weeks that gets the gig for week one. And of course, I think if that happens, I'm probably going to ditch Ethan Strange and, uh, and push KO Weeks into Keeney's spot and look to fit in maybe a, a Simonson or someone similar to that in the uh, in the center position depending on uh, on which way those final team selections go now I think Pappenhausen down there at wing fullback picks himself I would love to have more strength down in this center wing position I think it's a little bit weak but I think hopefully I'm overcompensating with a, uh, a fantastic forward pack Harry Grant up there on top as well I'm pretty confident with that kind of setup at this stage I think my bench is Pretty damn good as well. I think it's very strong. I've just got some uncertainty around Strange. I've got, obviously, Bradley in the emergencies as well. I want a little bit more flexibility, so I will be targeting someone like a Seb Chris in week two, just depending on how things play out. So there you go, guys. Look, that is my Vegas team for week one of the competition. I'm not anticipating making huge changes for the teams that don't play in Vegas next weekend. But uh, who knows, that team list Tuesday may throw up a whole bunch of surprises that, uh, that none of us are anticipating. And if there's a, uh, a smoky from left field that just comes out of nowhere and, uh, and has the potential to offer us some huge value, then I am definitely interested. Now, the other thing that I'm very conscious of as well is that there are no Tigers players in this team. And one team that I have neglected somewhat is the, uh, the Warriors in New Zealand. There's a whole heap of value over there. And as much as I would have loved to have had a few Warriors players, I just can't fit them in at this particular point in time. But I am very keen on a few of them. You know, Sean Johnson is massive. I hope he has another amazing season. RTS is looking like fire right now. And he could blow up and just be huge this year. So really excited to see what the, the Warriors in particular are going to do. The Tigers are an interesting one. I just don't have a lot of confidence in any of them at this point in time. But you never know. I might look at a Tigers player or two in, uh, in week two. So there you go, guys. Look, if you've liked the video, you know what to do. Smash that like button for me. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Not only subscribe, but join our uh, our league as well. I'll have all of the links to that in the description 
down below. So make sure you, uh, you have a crack at that. And uh, as always, guys, I'll see you all in the next video.